Hello, young witches and wizards from the Rehoboth Beach Public Library. This is Professor McCauley here to teach you how to make the kinds of treats that you would find at Honey Dukes or the Three Broomsticks or the Hogwarts Express. We're going to start with a simpler recipe. Uh, we're going to make cauldron cakes today. And so first I'm going to walk you through um, some tips that you want to make sure you're aware of when you start baking. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is preheat your oven because uh, you don't want to make your recipe and then realize, oh no, I have to, I didn't even turn the oven on. That's, that's not fun. Um, and always make sure you have a clear space to work with. Um, I know it looks like I'm not doing that because I have all the ingredients out, but it's always good to clean your space off, make sure there are no dishes in your sink. So you're all ready to go um, and make sure you have all the ingredients before you start. I can't tell you how many times I've started a recipe and I've gotten to a certain point and I realized, oh no, I actually don't have that thing in my cupboard after all. I have to run to the grocery store. And yeah, so make sure you have everything before you start and also, um, do not try to use magic to make the oven go faster. You don't want to start a fire and then have to explain to the muggle fire then why um, your chocolate frogs um, are melting all over the oven. And please, if you're making these treats all at the same time, do not try and use a time turner to make it go faster because then you're going to have three different versions of yourself running around, freaking the neighbors out, freaking your parents out probably. Don't do it. You know the wizard of laws. Don't use a time turner. So, now that we're all set, I'm going to show you what the ingredients we're using for the cauldron cakes. We have our chocolate devil's food cake mix. Uh, that's the simplest way to do it. Uh, just, you, just get some cake mix from your local muggle grocery store. Vegetable oil. A cup of water and three large eggs. And before we get started, I'm going to clear these away so you can see we have the mixing bowl, we have a beater. Um, you don't have to worry about these just yet. These are for decorating the cauldron cakes. So I'm going to put these aside for a moment just to show you. Actually, I am going to take off my robe because I don't want to get any flour or butter or eggs on it. I got these at Madame Malkin's and I would hate to ruin them. And you can actually, this is optional, but we're going to grease the cupcake pans. If you would rather just use cupcake holders, you can do that too. I'm just going to grease them because then it's going to make the cauldron look nice and smooth on the outside. But I have, just to save time, I have used, uh, I have used uh, cupcake liners before. So, you take a little bit of butter, you might have to heat it up first, just a tad. And then you're going to kind of, you're going to spread the butter around and around in each cupcake, each cupcake bowl. Do it all around. And now I'm going to take a little bit of all-purpose flour and sprinkle it into the cupcake hole, holes. Just a little bit, not too much. Okay. Just a dusting. What I'm going to do is kind of shake it around. 
actually, I should have put something, I'll do it over this one, but what I should have done was I should have put something down on my countertop first. Oh, silly Miss Lauren. But hey, while I'm at it, I can just um, pour some of this flour over the second cupcake tin. But what you're trying to do is you're trying to get the the cupcake the cupcake holes nice and lined with flour. This is going to keep the cupcakes from sticking to the cupcake tin when you take them out. And again, you don't want too much flour because you don't want it to taste dry when it comes out, but just enough so it doesn't stick. So, going to, actually I'm just going to move these over. So again, you always want to have a nice clear space. And I'm going to start, well first I've already preheated the oven to 350 degrees, and now I'm going to cut the cake mix. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the bag in the, in the mixing bowl so that when I open it, it doesn't go flying everywhere. really should have scissors for this. I'll use a knife. My mother took my scissors from me and she still hasn't given them back. So that's why I don't have scissors. Yes, Mom, I just announced that to everyone. I'm going to add the cup of water, which I've already poured into my measuring cup. And this is a nice measuring cup that one of my friends gave to me. Um, it shows like the exact measurements for one cup, two cups, half a cup, third cup. So that's really nice. And then I'm going to crack the eggs. Now what I like to do, because eggs have bacteria on them, is I like to put on some, some vinyl gloves, non-powdered obviously, so I don't get the bacteria on my hands. But that's just something I like to do. Not everybody does that. I'm going to take my egg and I'm going to crack it against the bowl. Empty it out, throw it away. Egg number two. And egg number three. Now another thing to keep in mind is I am just making enough for one batch. But if you're having a party, you have like the whole Gryffindor house over it, and, you're, um, and you need a lot of cupcakes, um, you can always double the recipe. So instead of three eggs, you would add six eggs. Instead of one cup of water, you would add two cups of water. So I'm going to throw out that egg. Throw out the gloves, stick 
the eggs back in the fridge. Now we need one third cup of vegetable oil. And what I always do is I always wait for it to, when I'm pouring a liquid, I wait for it to settle just to make sure that I have the right measurement. That's good enough. Pour it on in here. And that's all the ingredients you need for cauldron cakes. So I'm going to put those aside. And the next thing we want to do is beat the batter together. Some people use their wands for this, but for the sake of the statute of magical secrecy, I'm going to use a muggle beater. Okay. Okay, so we are going to beat them at medium speed for two minutes. So I'm going to... Okay, I think that's good enough. And when you're beating your mixture, make sure you're going along the edges too so you're getting everything that might be stuck to the side. And usually I will kind of take a wet paper towel and just kind of rinse this off, but you never, you never want to wash something that uses electricity in the sink. Water and electricity do not mix. So now I'm pretty much done. It is time to pour that cupcake batter into the cupcake tin. Okay, so I'm going to test you guys on something. Do you think you should be filling these up all the way to the top? No. You don't want to do that because what's going to happen when they're baking is the batter is going to rise. So if you filled it all the way to the brim, it would overflow all over the oven and make a big mess. Don't do that. Fill it about, about halfway. And some of it is going to dribble on the counter. I have accepted that. I have made peace with that. <laughs> Just make sure to clean your counter off when you're done. All right, so now because my oven is already preheated to 350 degrees, I'm going to put those cupcakes in the oven. I'm going to put them in the center of the oven on the center tray. And another little tip, uh, I like to put down a layer of aluminum foil on the tray so that way just in case by any, sh any stretch of the imagination some of the batter leaks over, it'll land on the foil, it won't hit the bottom of the stove. And I am going to use my special Hogwarts oven mitts to put this in the oven. Double check, they are going to take 21 minutes to bake. Okay, so now that my cupcakes are done, it is time for the fun part. It is time to start decorating. And as you can see, I've cleared away pretty much everything that was on the counter um, while the the cauldron cakes are baking in the oven I usually take that time to clean up my mixing bowl clean every all the 
utensils that I've been using, clean, wipe off the countertop, usually wipe the floor around where I was baking too in case any um, sugary ingredients got on the floor. I don't want ants getting on them. Um, so I've given, I've given the cauldron cakes time to cool down. And, you know, after all I said about, you know, making sure you don't, the, the cupcakes don't overflow by pouring too much batter into the, um, into the cupcake tin, what did I do? I poured too much batter and some of them are overflowing a little bit, but that's okay. We live and we learn. So what you're actually going to do, I'm going to hold up this lovely cauldron cake, is you are going to flip it upside down. And I'm just kind of, some of these are going to be a little lopsided, but I'm just kind of placing them around um, the plate right now. Some of them are not coming out, so after all the work I did. And I'll set these guys aside for right now so I can show you what we do next. And what we do next is we're going to cut a little hole in the center of the cauldron cake so that it looks like a little cauldron. Actually, I'm just going to get a paper towel real quick. I'm going to lay it down because when you're cutting your cupcake, you need to have a place to put the piece that you cut out. Of course, the other option is as you're cutting up your cupcake, you can eat the piece you don't need. This is my favorite part of making cauldron cakes. I don't know why. I'm gonna hold this up a little bit closer so you can see. That is what it's gonna look like. So it's a little cauldron. I'm gonna cut up the rest of them real quick. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just, like the pieces I'm not using, I'll just put them in a Ziploc bag to save for later for a snack. Now, the last step is filling your cauldron cakes with brew. I am going to be using green cake icing, but you can use whatever color you want. Take a look around your muggle grocery store and see you might want to have blue icing or you might want to have red icing or yellow. I would love it if you picked yellow because yellow is Hufflepuff's color. Now the kind I got is Betty Crocker icing and it comes with um, comes with different shapes you can put on the nozzle to make the icing look a little different but you don't have to stress about that too much it doesn't matter you just want to make it look like um, a brew a potion bubbling out of a cauldron so what I do to make it come out is I put this on the nozzle and then I tilt it back. I press down. Ah. Whoops. See, even this line makes mistakes. You might need to get a couple of these. There we go. There's the cauldron cake. And then the very last step I have some powdered unicorn horn, or as Muggle likes to call, Muggles like to call them, gold sugar cupcake gems. And I'm going to 
gonna sprinkle them all over my cauldron cakes. Da, 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 da. And there you have it, one delicious cauldron cake. 